Hi. I am glad to welcome you to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell and also give a like. These simple steps will help increase the number of excellent summaries for you. You are licensing book summary. Lighter, let go of the past, connect with the present, and expand the future by Young Pueblo. Introduction My story in 2011, after another night of reckless success, I found myself on the floor, thinking my heart was going to explode. I used and abused drugs to numb the pain and hide. There was sadness and anxiety inside me that screamed for my attention but I could do nothing to deal with it. I don't want to let my parents down. I need to live and make the most of the opportunity they have given me, writes Ruben Navarrete. For about two hours I just lay on the floor, unable to move, as I felt an enormous pull to cling to life. I was done with hiding. I knew that my path forward had to be based on radical honesty, Wintory says. When I was feeling anxious or depressed, I would bring my awareness inward to take a good look at the tension in my mind. I found immense amounts of sadness and fear, and an emptiness that ached for love. Simply accepting whatever I found helped me feel a new sense of ease. When a friend told me about Vipassana meditation, I knew intuitively that this was something I needed to pursue. Closing my eyes to feel what was really inside me opened me up to an entire universe. By 2016, I stopped consuming alcohol and marijuana and adopted a lifestyle free of all intoxicants. Self-awareness began to blossom and a greater sense of inner clarity helped me overcome the fear of being alone with my thoughts. My mind felt like it had new space where I could more intentionally choose the actions that felt most genuine and least harmful when tough situations would arise. Why Young Pueblo and Why This Book? When I felt plagued by sadness and anxiety, I could not imagine that such a heaviness could one day become lighter and manageable in a healthy way. While everyone heals differently because each of our emotional histories is unique, it became clear to me that healing is open and available to anyone who seeks it. Author's pseudonym reflects social commentary that points to humanity's coming growth and maturation. The name Young Pueblo, literally means young people, signals a time when we will transition from being ruled by short-sightedness and self-centeredness. This book will hopefully serve as inspiration and demystify personal healing and its benefits. The author's new book, Lighter, is an exploration of what is possible when compassion scales up from the interpersonal level to the structural level. I hope this book's message is one among the many forces that support the emergence of a world where harm is no longer systemic. Chapter 1. Self-love. Self-love was the key to wholeness that I was unconsciously searching for. Paying attention eased my incessant craving for more pleasure. I discovered that the appreciation you seek from others will not hold the same rejuvenating power as the appreciation, attention, and kindness you can give yourself. What does self-love mean? Self-love is the first step that all inner and outer success is based on. Self-love gives your journey the energy and stability to stay on a clear trajectory. It is a profound commitment to self-discovery and to making your well-being a top priority. Self-love is the idea that you can buy yourself all the things you want, especially in the material sense. Treating yourself to small gifts or going on rejuvenating trips can fall under the umbrella of self-love. Material things cannot give you complete balance of mind and they cannot fundamentally heal your past. Self-love is a total embrace of all that you are while simultaneously acknowledging that you have room to grow and much to let go of. It is nourishing yourself deeply without becoming self-centered or egotistical. The greatest benefits of self-love come from the positive interactions between you and yourself. Radical Honesty Radical honesty is a warm recognition that you gently apply to your conscious life. Thoughts and emotions that were once discarded or ignored are now embraced. More than anything, any lie that you formerly told yourself is examined so that the truth may come forward. The more lies you build up over time, the more you become a stranger to yourself. Self-love is an invitation to our inner world. When we turn our attention inward, we come across the entirety of our conditioning. Engaging ourselves through the medium of curiosity will take the old energy that we formerly used to run away from ourselves and give it a new purpose. Inwardly, we ask ourselves questions such as, what do I really want from life and how can I best align my actions to support my evolution? This momentum of honesty and a growing understanding of ourselves can become a source of power, helping us overcome old barriers and release baggage. Positive Habit Building When we are honest with ourselves about what is not serving us, we can redirect our energy. To be honest, the changes hurt at first. I was determined to live in a new way, so I had to face the discomfort that sometimes comes with personal transformation. When you allow your self-love to inform your decisions, it will challenge you to raise the standard you have for yourself. If you focus on repeating wholesome behaviors that nurture your being from the inside out, you will decrease the amount of inner struggle you use to feel daily. Self-acceptance When we become open to self-discovery, our inner world will open up to us. Our history, 
which was once in the dark, will reveal itself under the light of self-awareness. The deep self-love that can make profound changes in our lives will turn us into explorers. Self-acceptance is a deep embrace of reality, letting go of punishing ourselves for the past. When our self-love becomes active, transformation is immediately set in motion. No transformation carries an unbreakable upward trajectory. The best way to be prepared for the long journey is to move through the ups and downs with self-acceptance. Self-love is a gateway. The more we come in contact with our truth and learn to embrace it with full acceptance, the more we are able to find greater personal harmony. At its highest levels, self-love expands into an opening to loving all beings unconditionally. Self-love is the ability to feel and express unconditional love for others in all forms. An individual who is completely free does not harbor any ill will in their heart or mind. This is not just a quiet love felt within oneself, but a love that can take action whenever necessary. The Bridge Between Self-Love and Healing Self-love and healing are deeply intertwined, and if you take one seriously, the other will be immediately activated. As I activated my self-love, I developed a clearer picture of my mind and what it carried. Self-love gently walked me inward, introduced me to myself, and showed me that I needed to double down on the nourishing behavior. Chapter 2. Healing. Growing up as a poor immigrant in the United States was incredibly challenging. My parents had little opportunity for upward mobility because they were not college educated and did not speak fluent English. Poverty pushed hard against the safety of the home my parents were trying to create for us. As a child, I saw my parents struggle to pay the rent every month for our small apartment. Fear found fertile ground in my mind, often creating visions of the worst outcomes. As a young adult, scarcity made me more attached to the few things I could get. The human mind is commonly full of stress and anxiety. Honoring the fact that our ups and downs have affected us deeply opens us up to learning how to live in a better way. The mind will not do what is good for it unless we intentionally train it to do so. The ability to see yourself as you move through the ups and downs of life, without running away or suppressing your feelings, enhances your understanding of yourself. When you make time to be present in your own mind, it becomes possible to slow things down when difficult situations arise. The shape of your internal dynamic always influences what will come your way. If we don't align ourselves with peace, then harmony will have a hard time coming into our lives. Healing will not only improve your life, but it will open the door for good things to come to you. A big part of healing yourself effectively is taking responsibility for your patterns. People can certainly help you, but it is your intention and effort that will help you evolve past the hurt. If there is one thing to focus on for improving your life, your healing should be it. Our ego likes to place blame outside ourselves, and often that blame falls on those closest to us. Whenever anger or another heavy emotion appears in your mind, it will start looking for more fuel. A commitment to reminding yourself that you are the maker of your destiny will help you reassert yourself. When you can see the way your mind is moving, you can then use your intention to course correct as necessary. It is possible to honor where you are and where you want to be by feeling the reality of the heaviness but not giving it power over your actions. Healing is not about perfection, it is about no longer living unconsciously. Patterns are built over decades, and reactions that have accumulated over long spans of time gather deep in the subconscious. You have to love yourself to change yourself, and loving yourself does not take days off. Emotional History Everything we feel leaves a mark on the mind, and it all accumulates in our conditioning. Our conditioning is literally the past that we carry with us wherever we go. These reactions harden over time and develop into specific behavior patterns that arise when the mind is reminded of a past situation. Healing is processing and unloading all the programming from the past that hinders our ability to live freely in the present. Developing an understanding of what we have personally gone through helps us unlock the rigidity of our reactions. Instead of being trapped in a cycle that repeats the past, we can break the cycle. Finding my patterns. After hitting my rock bottom, I decided to try Vipassana meditation. This type of meditation dates back to the Buddha's original teaching, but modern interpretation comes from S. N. Goenka. He passed away in 2013 before I had a chance to meet him in person. After a meditation retreat I undeniably felt better than I ever had in my life. My mind felt lighter and more open, my emotions did not feel clogged up anymore. In no way was I totally healed, but I glimpsed that if I kept practicing I would continue to get life-changing results. When things would get really hard, I did not run back to hard drugs and the ups and downs of life did not feel as extreme. More evidence of genuine change showed up in how I treated others. Meditating taught me to focus on building equanimity, balance of mind, instead of allowing the mind's reactions to roll on endlessly. My mind does not feel perfect or fully wise, and the walk to total liberation continues, but I do have a clear path that makes me feel that the steps forward are real and substantial. More than childhood. 
a lot of our most dense conditioning is accumulated during childhood. Every time we react and feel one heavy emotion or another, it leaves an imprint in the subconscious. The human mind remains malleable and mutable throughout its lifespan. At the core of what we truly are is change. S. N. Goenka, our reaction is not to what we think, but to how we feel. If we think about something pleasant and then experience an unpleasant sensation in the body, the tension we feel is driven by the distaste we have for the unpleasant sensations. We often fail to realize how big an effect feeling and the reaction to what we feel has on our stress and mental conditioning. Being able to see the power our reaction has over our mood can show us how much suffering we have been causing ourselves. This realization also gives us hope for future healing because how we react is not set in stone. Healing versus Liberation In Vipassana, the pervasiveness of dissatisfaction that humans feel is due to craving, but it's possible for all of us to fully eradicate craving and thus be fully liberated. A lot of my understanding regarding attachments and reactions are within the context of what the Buddha taught and what I have observed through meditation. The focus of this book is healing, and it deals with the thresholds many of us cross as we deepen our healing work. The path of liberation does this same work, but it also goes much further. If someone decides to walk the entirety of the path, they will eventually reach the end of suffering. To each their own. No modality has a monopoly on how to heal. How one person heals is not how all people heal. Healing practices are abundant and becoming more accessible. The key is to find something that is challenging but not overwhelming. When you see and feel how much you carry, it's time to start letting go. Chapter 3. Letting Go. When I was writing my first book, Inward, I would get randomly hit with a great amount of melancholy that would sometimes stretch for days. Later on, I recognized that each time sadness was arising within me, my mind was just cleaning itself out. Sticking to meditating through that time helped me efficiently process all that stagnant sadness. To be able to accept what is, we have to relinquish our hold on how we wish things to be. Letting go is essentially a profound acceptance of the present moment. The pull to behave in old ways weakens over time as we choose new ways that honor the present. Holding on is a survival tactic born out of fear and scarcity. Fear is the craving for safety. Living through fear keeps us far away from peace. Identifying where we are holding on to things that hold us back can help us understand how to let go. The trouble we cause ourselves. If you are open to experiencing a profound transformation, you need to come to terms with the fact that much of your struggle is self-imposed. Owning your power also means owning the responsibility for your happiness and for your healing. No one has the power or authority to save you the way you can save yourself. Many of us believe that other people are causing all our internal stress and tension. The way we perceive and react to what is happening lies within our own mind. Since the amount of stress you experience depends on the intensity of your reaction, the only solution is changing yourself. Many of us get stuck in a reactive loop, always allowing external events to dictate how we feel. Managing reactions does not mean suppressing emotions. When you understand how much of your inner troubles are based on uncontrolled reactions, you start to see how managing your reactions can help you improve your life. Being thoroughly honest with yourself means embracing all your emotions without rejecting those that are harder to feel. Managing our reactions means being aware when a tough emotion has appeared and understanding that even if we have an initial reaction, we do not need to keep feeding that reaction. Resistance to change. Embracing change is the path to alleviating and eventually eradicating suffering. Change is the truth that binds together the arc of the universe. The wisest and happiest people I have met are continuously immersed in the truth of change. Without the undercurrent of change, life itself would not be possible. A meditation teacher has been meditating for more than 50 years. He is one of the only people who has no evident reaction when he ponders his own impermanence. His wisdom arises from his detachment from his sense of self and his focus on using his life for service. When the awareness of change matures, it washes away attachment and makes room for a loving presence that peacefully accepts that all things arise and ultimately pass away. One of our greatest mental enemies is the fight against change. Since change is something we can't escape, there is no other option but to fully embrace it. I didn't understand that when you fail to embrace change, a great moment actually loses its vibrancy because too quickly the mind starts to feel anxiety about it ending. Similarly, hard moments feel like endless punishment because change has not brought the mind into balance with the understanding they, too, will eventually end. The real you. You hold up your immediate reaction on a pedestal, believing that it defines your identity and reveals the core of who you are. The real you is your response that comes after your reaction. For the vast majority of us, our perception is completely colored by our past. The river of life wants to move you toward embracing change. The past keeps you stagnant, which may be easy in the moment because the past is familiar, but ultimately does not serve you well. 
Through intention, you reveal who you really are, says author Dara Ogunlezi. Attachments. Cravings are a rejection of reality as it is, and bring our focus into imagining what is missing or how we wish things would be. When our desire for things to be a certain way combines with tension, craving emerges. Craving is what keeps the mind full of tension and keeps us far away from being fully present. Hurt and attachment are bound together. The more deeply we identify with something, the more our ego grabs hold of it. The lighter the attachment, the less hurt there will be. When someone says something contrary to what we would like them to say, the pain we feel is tremendous. I did a poor job listening to my sister as she navigated the college admissions process. She realized it would be best for her to figure out her own way through the process without my help. Now our relationship has more harmony in it, because I focus on asking questions instead of giving advice. Attachment is a huge pattern, arguably one of the biggest. And each time we create another mental image that we wrap our identity around, we make the pattern thicker and more liable to occur over and over again, writes author John Rawlins. The reality is that there is no security in attachment. Every attachment is a rebellion against impermanence. Wanting things or people to exist in a very specific way is difficult to achieve when all we can truly control is our own actions. Attachment often manifests in the mind first and then seeps into the external world as an attempt to control. If suffering is real, so is happiness. If suffering is augmented by a lack of awareness, an increase in self-awareness can help you achieve a state of less mental tension. Even with the truth of suffering, once we let go of our craving for things to always be exciting, peaceful, and good, we give ourselves a greater amount of flexibility. When you are attached to nothing, happiness appears in abundance. There is nothing passive or cold about letting go. In the act of letting go, the element of control won't be as predominant. Serenity is possible when we are no longer carrying the ever-growing baggage of mental images. The control of ego. When someone close to us is making choices that we would not make ourselves, our initial impulse is to want them to think and act like us. Our ego will make it seem like we are acting in their best interest by trying to convince them to behave or make decisions in a way we find agreeable. Love exudes the security and confidence to embrace differences. It understands that our loved ones are complex and that control will never bring them closer to us. Decentering ourselves from our own perspective is a useful skill to develop because it allows us to more easily appreciate how someone else views things. Letting go takes time. Letting go is not a one-time event, it is a habit that requires consistent repetition to become strong. Patterns for specific types of behaviors can be so firmly rooted that during our healing process we may feel that the same issues keep coming up for us to work on. Unloading and facing the mental weight of past hurt is never easy, but it is possible, especially when you feel ready for a great transformation. Setting the record straight. If you are seeking to reclaim your power, one of the essential steps is realizing how much of your power you have given up to the hurt of the past. Letting go of craving quick results helps you get comfortable with the process of accomplishing new and difficult things. As a sign of victory, you can let tough thoughts and emotions pass without allowing them to dominate your mind or control your actions. Letting go decreases self-centeredness and allows love to come forward unconditionally. Love shines brightest when it is shared in the present moment. Chapter 4. Finding Your Practice Vipassana meditation helps mediate the craving that causes suffering within the individual. As a member of Boston's Youth Organizing Project, BYOP, I saw the power of collective liberation in terms of undoing systems of oppression. But I never felt any relief from the tension that was often flowing intensely in my mind. The importance of mental health has transcended localities and become global. What works well for one person may be the wrong fit for someone else's mind. There are an abundance of healing techniques that are more accessible than ever before. Everyone can have a more peaceful mind if they learn to let go. The stigma surrounding mental health is decreasing. We don't need to hide the difficulties we face in our minds the way our parents used to. There is nothing wrong with letting our enthusiasm lead and letting our friends and family know that we have found a practice that actually works. Tips for finding your practice. If you were to search how to heal anxiety on Google, you would likely get over a hundred million results. Some of the most popular healing techniques include one-on-one -on -one talk therapy, group therapy, yoga and meditation. The key is to settle on a practice that meets your conditioning where it is. Intuition is a calm persistence that reveals itself as a knowing, as opposed to a craving. Intuition just knows, and the message is delivered without tension. One thing you try may lead you to another, and, eventually, you will land on something where your intuition declares clearly, this is it. Be wary of techniques that promise fast results or miraculous effects and say they will do all the inner work for you. Real healing is definitely doable and life-changing, but it will take time. 
leaning on experienced people will only make your healing journey more productive and efficient. When you seek out a new technique, make sure to give it a fair trial and try it for a few weeks. You won't be able to properly assess if a practice is for you if you quit as soon as it gets hard. Knowing yourself ignites a process of transformation that helps you reclaim your power. Chapter 5. Human Habit vs. Human Nature The Western world has long maintained a bleak view of human nature, judging human beings as fundamentally self-interested and dominated by greed. Greed is good is a cultural meme that gives voice to the way many people feel about the value of self-serving thinking and behavior. The Buddha taught that craving and aversion are the great motivators of human thought, speech, and action. The selfishness of greed is deeply rooted in the mind, but it is a pattern like any other. Our real human nature is love, mental clarity, creativity, and a zest for life. Human history has not yet known healing on such a vast global scale. This will be the moment when change makers will be able to unbind their human habit. The layers of human habit are not easy to overcome, but with patience, intentional action, and good healing methods we can. S. N. Goenka, one of my favorite stories from the Buddhist Sutta shines light on our innate nature. Angulimala embraced meditation and the deconditioning process and became a liberated saint. Saints have no motivation whatsoever to cause harm to themselves or others. All that remained was the clarity of a human being fully connected to the unconditioned nature that all people can access within. Human Habit of Survival Happiness requires intentional action, healing, letting go, and teaching the mind to settle into the present moment. Understanding your patterns, and being aware of what types of situations cue them, takes a lot of their power away. True human nature is a mind that is no longer governed by patterns. Left to its old patterns, the mind will continue its reactivity and keep you functioning on autopilot. In the state of human habit, it is hard to know what we want to do with our lives. Many people find that once they start healing and accessing their human nature, they drop their old goals. Human habit is prevalent in us when our mind focuses too much on the past or the future. To break the loop of getting caught in anxiety, we must come in contact with our emotions as they arise in the present moment. Many of the most powerful experiences can be found there, wisdom, love, joy, healing, and peace. When your attention is in the present moment, the door to your human nature is open. The mind becomes more stable, less driven by false narratives, and better able to connect with peace easily. Avoidance may seem like the right answer in the moment, but as you repeat this reaction of avoidance it will only make this pattern stronger. The True Beauty of Human Nature When you break down layers of old conditioning, your inner revolution begins. You experience the revival of a mind that is no longer heavily weighed down by the past. When you start saying no to old patterns and choosing actions that better align with how you authentically feel, your human nature starts to shine through. Using present moment awareness to activate your human nature gives you access to an abundance of mental clarity. You feel more, see more, and solve more. At first it may even feel superhuman because your mind feels like it has a higher degree of intelligence but this is your natural, unburdened state. Human nature is open to all of us. The Buddha, Jesus and other great figures have used introspection to activate their human nature. This allowed the innate clarity of love and the power of peaceful creativity to flow abundantly. Even if we tread slowly into doing introspective work, we can make progress that can radically transform our lives for the better. As you decondition your mind, your human nature becomes more predominant. The qualities of a healed mind become easier to access, but even so they are like seedlings that have just burst into the sunlight. Practice love for yourself and others, and it will become stronger. Chapter 6. Emotional Maturity Emotional maturity is not about perfection, but rather building up self-awareness and compassion. Cultivate the ability to see yourself as you move through the vicissitudes of life. This will help you make decisions from a place of active clarity, instead of passive unconsciousness. Building your self-awareness increases the agility of your mind. When you make time to be present, it becomes possible to slow your mind down when difficult situations arise. Non-reaction is essentially a practice in patience. The patience you are building will permeate your mind and open up your perception. As you better understand yourself, your inclination to punish yourself for mistakes will decrease. As you see others struggle with their patterns, it will become easier to feel compassion for them. Making an active commitment to your personal evolution will open you up to deeper levels of wisdom and peace. Avoidance is the opposite of emotional maturity. When you can't handle your own pain or the turbulence of your emotions, it is easy to fall into a cycle where you use others as a means of escape. Spending time with other people as a way to avoid yourself is a common pattern when the hurt feels too heavy to carry. When you start journeying through your own inner landscape, self-awareness is activated and the door to wisdom opens up. 
A process of intuitive analysis starts when you recognize which relationships you should bring more energy to and which ones you need to let go of. Signs of emotional maturity. Emotional maturity means making sacrifices that support your long-term well-being more than short-term pleasure. Treating your energy like a precious resource has a deep effect on your life. Emotionally mature people are kind and gentle toward others, but give the highest priority to what helps them thrive. You don't need to jump into every argument or give your opinion on every matter. Sometimes you need to speak up in self-defense or to reaffirm boundaries. Having a strong sense of determination has helped you become a daily meditator and pursue writing as a career. When people are angry, they are often coming from a place of deep fear and hurt. With mental patience and agility, you can override your survival instinct of reacting to their tension with your own tension. From the space of human nature, it is easier to be gentle, compassionate and creative. If you believe that every moment of tension in your mind is always someone else's fault, then it will be difficult to feel substantial happiness or real peace. Accepting responsibility for your healing and happiness is incredibly difficult, but it is the only path available to us. Part of self-improvement is saying no to good things to make more space for the type of work or opportunities that really get you fired up. Saying no will organize your boundaries in a way that points you to what will actually give you the deepest sense of fulfillment. Knowing that you have much more to learn helps keep your ego in check. An ego that has grown large is naturally full of tension and too fragile to recognize when it is wrong. Knowing that others always have something to teach you keeps you from condescension and harsh judgment. Disagreements Real maturity is keeping your peace in the midst of a disagreement. Your peace has the power to stop a disagreement from escalating into an argument. When we navigate opposing views with compassion, it becomes possible to deliver our perspective gently. Remember, harmony does not appear out of nowhere, it often blossoms from disagreements. Being able to hold space for different perspectives is a sign of true love. People often share their misery, even if you have nothing to do with it. Help people when you can without becoming attached to being a helper. Remember, do not get stuck in a savior pattern. Intuition. Intuition is not grounded in fear and it does not feel like the endless cravings that swirl in the mind. It feels like the body has a calm compass and it knows where to go next, even if that knowledge causes the mind to recoil with fear because you have to do something outside of your comfort zone. I had never felt such clear support from within, and it was not just support. It felt like a clear instruction. The next step is NYC, she says. For the first month we stayed in a room at Shin's apartment and by the second month we had found our own apartment. On moving to New York City my intuition struck again, this time with even stronger force. I could feel that if I focused on writing now, it could be a good way to surf. There may be moments when your intuition tells you something but you are too afraid to hear it. I had virtually no experience outside of essays for high school and college. My Instagram account felt like a natural writing outlet. Being able to receive immediate feedback on the essays and small poems helped me hone my writing. It was a long process, and most of the time I felt that I was failing. Inward Author's first book was self-published before it was picked up by a publisher and distributed around the world. She says following her gut made her address deeper levels of fear and taught her to have faith in the process. Becoming a writer was always second to her personal growth, she says. Emotional maturity is having a flexible sense of identity. An identity that is flexible will encourage your flourishing and support you in discovering new parts of yourself. We reclaim our power by understanding our past and by intentionally living our present. If everything in existence is powered by change, our only option is to embrace it and let its movement inspire our evolution. Accepting difficult moments. The ocean of life flows between calmness and storms. Honoring the truth that challenging moments are common will help us let go of resistance. Facing difficult situations head-on from a place of balanced action, rather than with blind reaction, is a sign of emerging emotional maturity. Chapter 7 relationships. Love is freedom, while attachment is control. A person can be in love and unprepared to care for that love. Attachments are often molded by the hurt we have felt in the past. Real love feeds connection, not attachment. Connection has more room for balance. What makes relationships work, even when we ourselves are so imperfect, is self-awareness. Love is not just for soothing you, it is an engine of evolution. Putting an effort to remove the reins of the past from your mind is a powerful act of love. The greatest gift partners can give each other is a commitment to their own personal healing. After heartbreak. It's important to examine where we went wrong and how we might behave in the future. The heartache period is a reflective one, and can show us what we are missing. Examine what you are looking for in a partner and look for qualities that would fit well alongside your own. The only way loneliness will ever end is if you are no longer far away from yourself. When we are at war with ourselves, our self-love begins to blossom. 
being open to someone with a base of emotional maturity as you cultivate your own will increase your chances of connecting more deeply. Self-love is a matter of self-worth that brings balance to every connection we enter into. Some people love being alone, while others desire a partner. What matters most is that you tend to the love that dwells within you so that you can use it as a light. Your healing elevates the relationship. Self-love is the missing piece in many relationships. Some of the most beautiful relationships develop when both people realize they have a lot to heal within themselves. Love opens the door to vulnerability, which will allow more of each of you to come to the surface. Relationships are excellent incubators for personal growth. To be in each other's presence not only allows you to practice love but also forces the ego to see itself. When your mind is burdened with tumultuousness and unresolved pain, the people around you will be impacted by your inner struggles. I met my wife, Sarah, at Wesleyan University when she was an incoming freshman and I was a sophomore. Our friends thought we were already a couple because we spent so much time together. Between the two of us, there was a grand total of zero emotional maturity. For years, neither of us could fully see, let alone communicate to the other, how much of the friction between us was caused by the unobserved and unresolved tension that dwelled in us as individuals. It wasn't until we both started meditating that things really changed. I want you to know that I don't feel good right now, is a cue for the other that we could use support and compassion. Meditation has this critical ability to build self-awareness, which helped us notice when we were blaming each other for things that actually had nothing to do with the other. For the both of us, the first two years of meditating were a period of self-discovery and strong determination. It felt like a Herculean effort to push against the mix of laziness and the feeling of being too busy. Eventually, we put our feet down and decided that nothing was going to stop us. How's your relationship going? They had only recently moved in together after years of living in different cities. The pandemic spurred them to take the leap, but it wasn't easy at first. Fortunately, they didn't wait to see if things would just work themselves out and sought help. A couple went to a couple's therapist after realizing they were holding on to outdated images of each other from when they first met. They learned that they have to be intentional about loving the person who is in front of them now instead of an outdated version that only existed in the past. Good communication makes a difference. When one of you feels down, it is essential to communicate this clearly to your partner. Sometimes our tough moods have a clear cause, but other times our emotional shifts will not be so easily identifiable. Accepting where you stand within yourself helps you manage your reactions so that they don't become worse. Sarah and I have worked out a system for supporting each other during tough emotional moments. Conflict is natural because we all carry egos that are motivated by craving rather than honesty. Conflict can help you both know yourselves more deeply and honor your truths while remaining flexible. Ego craves to win, but loving clarity seeks to understand. To see each other clearly, you need to take turns sharing your perspective. When one is sharing their perspective, the other needs to do their best to listen selflessly. This only works if you both take turns and seriously accept the task of listening. What does supporting each other TMS happiness really mean? Giving support can help us navigate this critical aspect of healthy relationships. We have no option but to take responsibility for our own happiness. Avoiding responsibility, doing nothing to understand your own story, and not trying to manage your reactions will create conflict in your relationship. Your mental state gives color and vibrancy to your external environment. It takes two people giving active support to create a harmonious relationship. Letting each other know how you need support gives the other person a chance to put forward effort. If they are asking for something that is not doable for you, honor yourself by saying so. What works one day may not help you in a new situation the next. Guessing games are a recipe for disaster, so never expect your partner to be able to read your mind. Seeing each other as changing beings will make it easier to switch things up whenever necessary. You should each get at least half of what you want from your partner. This may include how much time you spend together and other major decisions that affect both of you. If one person is deciding everything in the relationship, this can quickly devolve into an unhealthy pattern. Relationships work when you intentionally try to share control. At best you can each control half the relationship, but not all of it. There is a high likelihood that you will get much more than half of what you want because you and your partner's interests will align. Deeper into communication. Miscommunication between two people is incredibly common. Since we are communicating through filters of perception, it takes a certain degree of calmness and emotional maturity to really understand each other. Especially in the beginning of a relationship, you are better off communicating frequently and erring on the side of overcommunicating. Being in a mature relationship is not about perfection, it is about embracing the fact that you are both in the midst of growth. To reach deeper levels of love and unity, you have to take the path of honesty with yourself and those around you. Healthy modes of communication, based on compassionate honesty, create a deeper level of respect. 
The value of friendship. When we connect with the right people, it makes a massive difference. Real friends have a naturally disarming nature that helps us put our guard down. Above all, the friends who last are the ones who appreciate you as you grow and see the value of your healing. I met my closest friend, Lennon, when I was in the fourth grade and it feels incredible that our bond has withstood so many different eras of our lives. We were always getting into deep discussions about movies and books that we wanted to share and dissect with each other. I loved talking to her because she treated me like an adult, even when I was really young. Today we keep in touch frequently, even though we no longer live in the same city. Our past had a way of smoothing out any awkwardness, even if we hadn't seen each other in a long time. A great friendship doesn't need to last forever for it to be an incredibly profound part of your life story. Connecting on the level of values, views of the world and history together can help become a foundation for a long-lasting friendship. We only have so much time to give to other people, especially as we grow older. Chapter 8. Challenges During Healing. There is so much inside of us, depending on our personal emotional history, that at times it can feel overwhelming. The process of letting go will be filled with ups and downs. But if you can handle them with awareness, openness and a keen mind, they will fill you with new wisdom. Measuring your progress during the journey. Many times, we compare how we are today with how we were yesterday or a month ago. The truth of the journey is much more complicated and unpredictable. In the midst of that rise, you will encounter the messy reality of undoing the old and practicing the new. Intentionally relaxing that microscopic self-awareness will give you a much better idea of how far you have come. A noticeable difference between how you are managing your reactions now and how you managed them in the past is a major sign of progress. It is especially important to suspend self-analysis during your deepest down moments, when the mind is full of turbulence. Some days will be hard simply because healing is a matter of saying goodbye to the old you and your old ways of being. In time, it will become easier to be the authentic you, but in the beginning it will feel as if you are constantly having to intentionally slow down. Moments of tough release. When we look inward, it has to be done with courage because what we find will often be jarring. Healing helps clean the mind, but first it will show you the patterns that cause you the most anguish. Unbinding these knotted up burdens and unchaining ourselves from old conditioning sometimes causes moments of turbulence. It is easy to mistake a stormy moment for taking steps backward, but these steps are laying the groundwork for taking a big leap forward. Storms serve two main purposes, they give you an opportunity to practice acceptance and gentleness and they help you release whatever is coming up. When you feel a lot of agitation, you need to be aware that your mind will look for objects, people, ideas, or situations, to focus on. Tension needs fuel to burn, and that fuel is normally the attachments that keep the mind from fully accepting the present moment as it is. Having a circle of friends who can be your comrades on the healing journey can be an incredible support system. Just as it is important to serve others, it is valuable to let others serve you. When we help each other, we simultaneously practice selflessness and make our own futures brighter. Letting go of the old you. As part of your healing journey, you will have to continuously let go of who you were. Focusing your perception on the present takes intentional action. Who we are is constantly changing, but when we start giving the river of change a direction, the shifts can become quite pronounced. The ego loves labels, not only for the sake of understanding but to acquire more kindling for the fire of attachment. As we grow, we are bound to require refined and more subtle perspectives to help us understand the human condition. To avoid unnecessary suffering, it serves us not to become attached to what we know. Even our relationship to our old hurts can become a hindrance if we see it as something static that we can never get rid of. Hanging on to the remnants of the past will only delay your arrival into the present. To fully embrace growth, we must be willing to venture into the unknown. Wisdom will find you ready and worthy when you let go of all ideas and views. Understanding yourself is one thing, but timeless wisdom asks you to take a step further. Let go of who you thought you were and embrace the river of change flowing through every moving part that creates your perception. Being okay with slow movement. Toxic ideas that grips our minds are perfection and reality. If we can take our goals and work toward them by embracing progress, instead of aiming for perfection, we will build a sturdy foundation for long-lasting change. Practicing slow movement will not only decrease inner turmoil, it can also make us more effective. In a society based on speed and productivity, moving slowly is a radical act. Our human habit has an attachment to hierarchy and the desire not to be at the bottom of it. When we are primarily consumed with being ahead of others, we are no longer working with a balanced mind. Moving at your own pace. I felt a strong craving to do more. The transformation I was going through felt deep enough and the changes in my perception made me feel that I had my hands full, writes Asha Bhaktivedanta. I wanted to be free, too, and I knew that freedom takes real work. 
I did not realize how much I was failing to appreciate my journey and how comparing myself to others was making me doubt my progress. There is so much power in having healing companions, people who can share the ups and downs of your inner journey, writes Dalai Lama. Competitiveness has a tricky way of sneaking into every facet of life, even into our healing journey. Maturation means not bringing up so much at once that it overwhelms your mental space. It means having a clear balance between doing deep work that brings up a lot of old things you need to process. Integration periods are a key part of moving at your own pace. The amount of wisdom you can gain from going inward is powerful and awe-inspiring. Accepting all that you are, loving the hard parts of yourself and meeting yourself with gentle compassion will cause radical shifts in your personality and behavior. Chapter 9. Internal Changes Ripple Outward. When your mind starts connecting with your human nature more easily, real-life changes start happening. How you see yourself and the world may shift so much that you start to feel as if you are living a new life. The challenge is releasing your attachment to who you are and boosting courage to accept your natural unfolding. Creativity. When you can connect more deeply with your human nature, your mind will have a greater sense of clarity because it is not as focused on the past. Inner peace and mental clarity make a powerful combination that produces an immense amount of original and imaginative thinking. Life-changing insights are not forced, they arrive in their own time. When the mind is no longer overloaded with mental burdens, it can look at the world in a new way. Healing opens the door to happiness and creativity for everyone, not just artists. Imagine the type of political and economic solutions that will emerge from people actively healing themselves. New Boundaries and New Actions Boundaries will play a big role in giving you the shield you need from the world. Distancing yourself from situations that weigh you down is essential. Being able to move through life while staying in alignment with how you want to feel and behave is a sign of great maturity. Building boundaries is different from building a wall. A wall can easily become a block that keeps us from evolving and learning how to deal with difficult interpersonal situations. Healthy boundaries will support our well-being. Improving your ability to be honest and vulnerable with yourself will tighten and deepen your inner circle. As you get older, the changes in your mind and heart will reverberate outward into all facets of your life. Relationships with different friends will evolve as you continue growing. Your friendships are a critical investment. They are the network that can uplift you during hard times and share your joy when you succeed. When I started meditating, I found so much love and gratitude for my father and all that he had done for us. The love I was giving him softened his walls, which had built up over time. He told me he loved me as well and slowly revealed more of his story. If you take your healing seriously, the way you engage with your inner circle will become much more authentic. Love flows more easily when honesty and vulnerability are welcome. Some may be confused or put off by your authenticity, especially if the relationship they have with themselves is too distant. Community. Self-reflection can lead to a greater sense of compassion for others that emerges from understanding how our own story has influenced our patterns. When we lessen the load that we carry in our minds through self-healing, we usually end up having more energy for life. Conventional truth versus ultimate truth. The greatest truth that opens the door to happiness is the undeniable role that change plays in all of existence. The more we understand change, the happier we can become. Who we are is a momentary construction, a series of rapid combinations that come together to create the image of our existence. Having to always buttress who we are, to defend the image we hold in our mind, is a constant source of stress. Letting go of I opens you up to the flexibility that you need to cultivate real peace. Love is so powerful that it even has the capacity to protect you. Even though we don't exist, our conventional existence has real ramifications. Being able to live in balance with these two truths can help us let go of so much misery related to our sense of self. When we become less attached to I and understand that we are also an impermanent phenomenon, we can flow with greater alignment. Moving outward. In this current time, therapy and meditation are rapidly spreading through the world. This global burst in introspective work is not just happening within a few people, it is happening at a tremendous scale. Jiddu Krishnamurti said, a change in one is a change in millions. Love is a powerful force that brings harmony into your being. It motivates you to treat others with gentleness and to do what you can to bring harmony into the lives of others. Once we see that inner change is real, it makes the idea of outer change seem much more achievable. As individuals we try hard to be kinder, but as groups we too easily throw kindness out the window. Love motivates the creation of more love. If more people become guided by love and seek to use their lives to bring more harmony into the world, it becomes possible to create new systems. Chapter 10. Harmonizing the World. Before gentrification, most of Boston's Jamaica Plain neighborhood was a very diverse, low-income community. As a first-generation American, I didn't feel like another. 
my classmates at Wesleyan were dealing with the same stresses and money pressures as I was. Writer's time at Wesleyan University was transformative and left him with a clear picture of how out of balance the world is. Before we can work toward harmonizing the world through the creation of structural compassion, it is necessary to understand our collective problems and their connection to the human mind. The survivalist mind is often self-centered, and its sight is narrowed down by two primary motivators, craving and aversion. Until we do our inner work and discover our human nature, it is difficult to react with anything other than ceaseless cravings and the fears those cravings produce. Ego has a volatile and combustible nature. Our perception is constantly deciding if something is good or bad, stops us from observing reality clearly. If we want to heal the world, not only do we have to redesign society, but we also have to help individuals heal themselves. When your emotional history is unknown to you, it can flare up and consume your actions. Even when you lift up the banner of hope, it is easy to drop it when you have never untied the roots of craving, aversion, and ignorance. Power functions like a magnet that reveals your roughest patterns. Ego creates triangles. The ego loves centralized power, especially if this structure works to its benefit. Some assert that the triangle shape affords great efficiency to any organization. This may be true to a certain degree, but comes at the cost of blocking the power of those who are not fortunate enough to land one of the coveted spots. The triangular shape of society breeds animosity and friction. No matter who is at the top, those who are not in control will feel the effects of their disenfranchisement. Justice is too easily confused with revenge. The cycle of harm will continue until we address the root cause of suffering within the individual. Healed human nature creates circles. The circular model of society calls us to evolve our idea of democracy. Involving more people in democratic governance will have a healing effect on humanity. Circular designs already have a degree of popularity through cooperatives, worker-owned businesses, mutual aid funds, and horizontally run organizations. Being part of a process that helps you live in your power is deeply transformative. We can combat alienation and revitalize our communities by giving people power over their community. Allowing the public to decide how government funds will be spent in their communities is called participatory budgeting. Balance instead of extremes. Allowing ourselves to fall into extremes is what got us to this current state. Any changes to help build a better future should be made with balance in mind. Love does not just appear when things are hard, she says, it's there before and after. Racism and patriarchy need to be directly combated with compassion. Leveling the playing field for all people does not mean that we force everyone to be the same. Addressing disagreements without violence is a critical threshold that we need to cross if we are to truly think of humanity as civilized. The last thing we need is our technology amplifying the rough and heavy aspects of our character. Unchecked algorithms that have no sense of morality or compassion for the user can create incredibly harmful results. Our tech should connect and inform us without making us addicted or lonelier. Letting our egos control how we view the world will not help us, because the ego is normally in survival mode. Fear keeps humans from wanting to share abundance. Taking care of each other will give us more freedom as individuals to focus on creating culture and art. What is your ideal way of helping look like? If you are an organizer or entrepreneur, use your courage and creativity to build what you know is missing from the world. We don't have to start everything from scratch, we can find out more about the areas we are interested in and give time to already established organizations. Digital world plays with your emotions as if it were a piano. Information is rarely presented objectively, it will come packaged within a narrative that is often hiding in the background. You have to be critical and intentional if you don't want to be told what to believe. An essential step forward. Humanity will not be fully civilized until everyone has access to what they need to flourish, writes Robin Morgan. People working in terrible conditions and being paid unfairly for their labor is something that we need to leave in the past. Our world needs a base level of humane treatment that should be denied to no one. There is nothing wrong with competition, but people should no longer perpetuate a system where there is the potential of going hungry, homeless, and uncared for. We need to draw what is best from our ideologies to find a middle path that can take humanity to a new level of freedom and includes a global expansion of human rights. Structural Compassion Structural compassion is an attempt to build wider networks of support, giving people access to what they need. It is guided by the basic needs of all human beings. When fewer people are hurting, everyone is safer and there is more victory, celebration, and joy. We need to expand our compassion to encompass the world. This will help us identify with those we have never met but with whom we have so much in common. Just as small acts of kindness make a difference, so do the small amounts of time that we give to larger projects that bring about direct change. Love has this incredible capacity to expand itself. It inspires us to create more love, to bring harmony to situations that we are part of. 
love does not ask us to be endless crusaders. It simply asks us to help in ways that align with our talents and our means. From the lightness of a healed mind will emerge a fountain of courage and creativity to help you look at old problems in new ways. Until our own weight is lifted, it will create disarray, even when we wish to create balance. Healing is what will make a long-lasting future global peace a reality. Chapter 11. A New Era. There is nothing perfect about my life, but I cannot deny that there are clear changes in how my mind functions today, writes Dalai Lama. The path to a better life is a gradual one, where we sometimes feel as if we are standing in the middle of who we were and who we are becoming. Young Pueblo's reach grew slowly until I started meditating on a daily basis, and again when I stopped taking all intoxicants. After I did my first 20-day course, I was able to have mental stability to accomplish what I needed to release my first book. Priorities. Don't exhaust yourself trying to change the world by yourself. The best thing you can do for the rest of us is to heal yourself. As you move inward, your self-love will open the door to love for all beings, and that love will be active. Making yourself an agent of healing will remove you as a potential point of harm in the interconnected web of humanity. Living with a firm commitment not to cause other people harm will bring a bountiful stability to your mind. When you do feel that new love for the world, let yourself dream big and act on it. Courage. The healing generation is the moment when a vast portion of humanity is deciding that it is time to grow up. We need to take responsibility for the unequal and unsustainable design of society. It is not all our fault, we inherited this world and much of the structure from past generations. A loving approach matters. If we want to build a better world, it has to be done through love. Love is the strongest building material in the universe, and unconditional love sees no one as an enemy. Each new generation will have to make its own changes to continue enhancing human dignity and our collective quality of life. Love is empowering, it supports freedom, and it encourages us to seek the understanding of one another. Love does not support hierarchies, it treats all people as worthy equals, and seeks to nourish. There is no clear path to building a better world, but how we will get there must be navigated through a voluntary movement. We must leave space for nuances and have the humility to be convinced by better ideas. Ego often tries to convince us that our view is much more correct than everyone else's. Honoring our perspective and ideas without becoming eternally attached to them will help us move out of division. We fear change because we get attached to what we know, even if that knowledge is rough and fills us with dissatisfaction. The fear of the unknown stops great things from happening. If your views of the world fill you with tension, then it is time to adopt a more hopeful stance. Conclusion As you make your mind lighter, the world will become lighter. If you treat people well, your mind will have an easier time being calm. You can walk through our world gently, without letting people walk all over you or cause you harm. Kindness means leading with love. Self-healing, generosity, kindness, self-love, equality, and compassionate action can function as a guiding light. Wholeheartedly believing that compassion is possible on a grand scale will encourage more people to share in this mission. Eventually, this will cause shifts in the makeup of society.